Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Rina, once again bringing you another time lapse video. And today's is voiceover! Woohoo! I haven't done one since a year or so, maybe more? I'm sorry guys, but these videos take a lot more time to prepare. I cannot make them very often, sadly. <laughs> I'm not sure I would even have enough subjects to talk about on this, to be honest. Today I'm mostly gonna ramble about Ninjago, probably. Which, if you don't know yet, it's a LEGO show I've been obsessed with for the past few years. And the characters you're gonna see me draw in this video are from that show. Just, you know not in lego form because i've translated them into my style so yeah if you're in for some fungaling talk or whatever you're welcome to stay and if not just mute this video and put up some music you like <laughs> let me introduce you to these two guys in case you don't know them yet on the left with the long hair we've got cole black ninja and master of earth on the right, with fluffy, shorter hair, there's Jay, Blue Ninja and Master of Lightning. On the show, they're the best of friends, but I personally like to headcanon them as a couple because why not? <laughs> it's my imagination, right? I can do whatever I want. Plus, gay rights. Hell yeah! <laughs> anyway, today is special day in the fandom, to put it somehow and I'm going to explain you all why. Long time ago, some fans requested Jay's voice actor, Michael Adamswaite, I hope I pronounced his name correctly. <laughs> uh, they asked him to record himself uh, saying a very simple line, which was, I love you, Cole, in Jay's voice, of course. And he did it, he actually did it. We were all very surprised. As you can guess, everyone who supports this ship in the fandom which are many, by the way, <laughs> uh, was melting. It was such a short but sweet confession, uh, not to mention Michael's a great voice actor and he delivered it wonderfully. <laughs> then people started making fan arts of it, edits. It was crazy, but in a very endearing way. Fast forward to several months later, Kirby Morrow, Cole's voice actor, opened a five year or something like that I think I can't remember uh, where you could basically ask him to record any lines in any character he had voiced up until that point so me and some friends got reminded of Michael's audio and we thought wouldn't it be so cool to have Cole's voice actor record some sort of response to that I love you so we collected the money <laughs> thanks god it wasn't too pricey and we asked Kirby to do something like that. We weren't looking for anything too complex. And then on September 23rd, exactly a year ago, Kirby surprised us all with such a sweet reply that went, Oh, that's sweet Jay. But remember, I love you more. <laughs> yeah, that laugh at the end was part of the message too. <laughs> Needless to say, we were all screaming and fangirling, the fandom went completely nuts. So yeah, today is the first anniversary of those audios, or Bruce National Day, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the ship's name is Bruce, by the way, because you know, they're black and blue, like bruises. <laughs> It's a very stupid name, I know, but since it's based on their colors, at least it's easy to remember. I wanted to draw something for the anniversary, because this show has done so much for me and my art. It's ridiculous the amount of inspiration I started to get from it when I discovered the show. It made me force myself to practice male anatomy after neglecting it all my life <laughs> because I wanted to draw my favorite characters and I wanted them to look good, you know? Now I'm a bit more confident when it comes to drawing guys and I hope I will keep getting better little by little. It also made me pick up writing again. 
I used to write a lot when I was a teenager and I would create stories all the time but at some point I just stopped because I don't know I guess I just thought I wasn't good enough to create thinking about it now I feel so stupid I abandoned a hobby that used to give me so much life just because that silly reason but it's okay maybe I needed a long break from it to realize that it's something I really enjoy doing uh, I started writing stories in English too and letting people read them and I was just so overwhelmed by the amount of love I received like I think my English is pretty decent, but you know, there is a big difference in just writing for something casual, like social media posts, and actually telling a story in a way that catches people's attention. Once again, I feared I wouldn't be good enough, but my desire to create and share my love for this ship and the show with the other fans it was just too big to contain. And talking about fans, I've met some very awesome people through this journey that I consider my friends nowadays. So yeah, it's, it's crazy how something as simple as a couple of characters from a fictional show has helped me on so many levels. I think we don't realize how much we can impact someone else's life with just the smallest things. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, some of you feel a similar way with my art. <laughs> and honestly, that would make me so happy. I'm so happy I can bring joy to other people's life. Uh, just doing something I like, which is drawing and creating overall. I just love creating stuff. Another reason that I really really wanted to put something out for the anniversary is because unfortunately Cole's voice actor passed away a couple of months after he recorded that audio. It was all so sad and all the fans were devastated, all his friends and co-workers and other actors from the show, the whole team behind the show. Nobody saw it coming and it was just so sad. And many of us still mourn Kirby's loss in one way or another to this day. I wanted to draw something to sort of thank you, the two voice actors, for their work and for the gift as well. You know, not everyone goes out of their way like this to make their fans happy with something that doesn't even happen on the show. But I just find it so sweet of them to record those audios. <sighs> For one day, Michael and Kirby made this ship canon, in a way. <laughs> I know it's something very silly, but it's a detail that we all as fans will treasure forever. For anyone that's curious about the brush I'm using for the line art here, I can't remember where I got this G pen from or if I just modified the default one to make this. That's why I'd rather not offer it anywhere. But you can get lots of similar things from the assets page or just by playing with the size settings dynamics on the brush engine. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my tutorial about brush customization on Clip Studio Paint. My computer was acting weird one of the days I worked on this, so excuse me if some parts of the line art and base colors are cut. Clip Studio Paint closed all of a sudden and I had to redo some parts. The truth is, this piece was originally a sketch I discarded for a Ninjago design I contributed to last year. I just didn't feel it was the right illustration to go on that project, but I'm glad I saved the concept somewhere on my computer and could use it for this instead. So you know, don't delete files, don't destroy sketches, because one day you may want to go back to that specific idea you once had. 
Oh man, I've been wanting to use that flower brush since forever and now I finally got the chance! <laughs> I love Clip Studio so much, there are so many helpful brushes on the assets page. I wanted to create something with Jay and Cole just being a lovey-dovey and intimate in some way, with a soft light surrounding them, something that gave off a dreamy vibe that could translate my appreciation for the ship and for all the people who work behind that show and I knew that Doodle was the perfect one. I painted the eyes at the very beginning because I just couldn't stand the soulless look on their faces. <laughs> it doesn't usually bother me much but it did on this piece. Although the order in which you draw or color things doesn't matter much at all. I just like leaving the eyes for a later step because I enjoy them a lot and I like saving my favorite parts for when I'm starting to feel down or too tired because you know then it feels like a boost of energy when you paint their eyes and woo, they suddenly look a lot more alive. <laughs> Can we also appreciate Jay's freckles please? <laughs> Sometimes I forget to add them, even though I love Jay with freckles. Blush, blush. <laughs> it's really important for me to get the expressions perfect, because sometimes just a subtle change in the curve of the eyebrows or the mouth can give a whole different look to the characters. I really wanted them to look very peaceful and in love with each other in this piece. The way I like to work on illustrations with this type of lighting is to start applying the highlights first thing. Usually in a layered mode like overlay, hard light or something like that on top of the characters and I also apply it generally all over the illustration to see how the main idea looks from afar. Like for example, I knew I wanted Cole's chest and shoulder to have a lot of light on them, uh, but for Jay, I thought just some highlights around the edges of the hair would be enough, but then I changed my mind and added a few more on the front uh, or top of the head. After I refined the highlights, I started adding some shadows everywhere. None of these are definite, but I tried to keep them as clean as possible to keep building up the 3D sense equally everywhere. I feel like this method works the best for me, especially for this kind of piece with a lot of light. Because if I start adding details to, let's say, the hair, uh, I have a high chance of getting carried away and just adding too much stuff, or get all the colors weird and not cohesive with the rest of the illustration. So I prefer working a bit on the skin, a bit on the hair, a bit on the clothes, then back to the skin to correct mistakes and refine shapes, and so on. It's sort of like sculpting, I think. Hmm. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I just love this illustration so much. I had a lot of fun drawing it and I felt so happy and relaxed as I was working on it. I would sometimes pause and just stare at them for a minute because look at them! They're just so cute and perfect for each other! <laughs> One of the things I like the most about this ship is their dynamic, like best friends to lover. It is for sure my favorite trope. I love the idea of developing a deep friendship and slowly falling in love with the other person. I think it helps build up a solid relationship that can last for a long, long time. 
By the way, I know Jay looks girlish here. No hate on that, please. It's just the way I imagine the character would look like in human form. And if you don't like it, you just have to close the window and go watch some other video. <laughs> I don't even know why would someone still be here if they really dislike this ship or the way I draw these characters. <laughs> We're allowed to have different tastes and head cannons, but don't throw hate around just because someone doesn't share your opinion on something as stupid as how fictional characters look like or what are their sexualities. Like, so many people are so set on the idea that Jay is straight simply because he has a girlfriend on the show. Mm. Hello? Have you ever heard of bisexuals, or pansexuals, or closeted gays? <laughs> Let people have fun shipping Lego toys, please, it's not that deep. I'm also not going to tolerate any hate towards the LGBT community in the comments, by the way, and no shipping discourse either. If you only came here to steer drama, you're gonna get yourself reported and blocked. Simple as that. I'm too old and tired for that stuff. <laughs> Anyway, uh, back to the drawing. <laughs> Some of the shadows, I put them on top of the specific base color and others were added on top of the characters. I've always been too scared of not placing the shadows clipped to the base colors because I'm too methodical and square-minded when I work. <laughs> so like, everything has to be properly organized and follow a certain logic, but you know, it's just a lot easier sometimes to keep throwing layers at the top of the characters and just paint there. Especially on pieces with this sort of lighting, I focus a lot on maintaining a mood or ambience and going back and forth between all the different layers can become tiresome. So I just paint stuff on top of everything. I do this sometimes too with um, regular illustrations. Especially to fix small details I might have missed during the process. Painting over just gets so convenient at some points. So I wanna encourage you all to try this too. Just don't be scared to mess things up. It's digital media, so you can luckily erase and redo things as many times as you want without draining the paper or running out of ink or other stuff you need to keep in mind when you're using traditional tools. To color the line out faster, I used an auto action from another artist called Bump Bite. And then I fix some parts that look weird just by painting on the same layer with the airbrush. It's a great trick to save time. You can find a link to download that action on my FAQ, which is listed in the description. And from this point and forward, I just keep making small adjustments here and there, adding filters, playing around with the layer modes to create gradients and more ambience. Usually when I reach this point, I'm like, ah, oh, good, I'm going to finish this in a couple of minutes, yay! An hour later, and I'm still on the tablet because I can't decide if I should put an overlay layer at 43 or 45 opacity. <laughs> and that would be it. I can't think of anything else to tell you now. <laughs> Ah, uh, these kind of videos are so difficult for me. I swear I go blank most of the time and I have to rack my brain to come up with ideas to talk about. Some people be like, just explain what you're doing on the screen, blah blah blah. But the thing is, I don't actually know what I'm doing most of the time. <laughs> I'll be like, mm, I am putting a shadow here because... It looks good. <laughs> that's my logic. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think that's helpful at all if you're looking to learn how to draw through my videos. 
Another reason why I can't make all the tutorials you guys ask me for is that it takes me so much time to deconstruct my own drawing process. I guess it's because I've been doing this for so long that most of the things have become something as natural as breathing, to put it somehow. Uh, you know, it's just hard to put these type of things into words. Ah, but anyway, I hope I could entertain you a little with today's video. <laughs> I don't know when I'll be able to make another voiceover, but I do have an idea for something different next time, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to not miss out on any new content. And give the video a huge thumbs up, comment and share to boost up the engagement. Also, check out my Patreon and consider supporting me there as well. You can have access to all my sketches, high-res files, PSD files to learn how I create my art, and a lot more things. See you all soon, and take care, bye bye!